Welcome back to the Community Council, and thanks again for joining us today. If you are just tuning in now, we are the show that talks about everything great going on in our community. We show some love to amazing nonprofits out there just trying to make a difference. So I have someone in the studio with me right now, and uh, how about you introduce yourself? Sure. My name's Nimi Kapoor. I'm a fellowship-trained breast and thyroid surgical oncologist. I've been practicing with BreastLink for the past four and a half years, and I recently moved up to San Fernando Valley to start a new BreastLink up there in Encino. So... Why are you here today? I'm here today to talk about some recent issues. Um, certainly the medical community is more concerned with the rising rate of mastectomies. So that means removing the whole breast tissue, mm-hmm. either because of a cancer diagnosis or because of a gene mutation or a risk. So tell us about BreastLink, because you said you just opened one in San Fernando Valley, which congratulations, that is Thank very you. exciting. I live in the Valley, so welcome. Great. Um, but yeah, so tell us a little bit about BreastLink. What, why did you start doing Why did you start doing what you do? So I became a breast surgeon because I, I love working with women. I love the research aspect, and I love uh, the fact that cancer is an evolving disease entity, and there's a lot of always new cutting edge information in there. Um, BreastLink is a multidisciplinary organization, so we have Um, When you're taking care of cancer, it's not just one surgeon and that's it. Mm. Actually, if if you've ever known anyone with breast cancer, you have your medical doctor who usually sends and orders a mammogram. So we have imaging to do the mammograms and MRIs. Mm -hmm. You have a surgeon to remove the cancer, a medical oncologist to tell you whether or not you need chemotherapy, tamoxifen therapy, or other medication, a radiation oncologist, and even a reconstructive surgeon. So we all work together under the the roof of BreastLink to make this possible. So it's a multidisciplinary approach for women with breast problems. So it kind of, in a sense, puts every, like you said, puts everyone under one roof, Mm -hmm. and it makes it a lot easier, I Mm -hmm. guess, and and simpler, because nothing about this process is easier, simple, but you're trying to make it at least a little bit more comfortable for the patient. Exactly. When did you start it? Well, I didn't start it. It was started over almost 21 years ago wow. by Dr. John Link and Dr. Howard Berger from Radnet, who actually um, acquired practices in Orange County to create this model of multidisciplinary care with imaging as the backbone um, through Radnet and then adding the medical oncology breast surgery components slowly. So, you know, you said that there's there's some troubling new information out there and and that's why you're here today can you go into like a little bit more detail about that um because obviously we i just feel like the the constant battle is trying to find a cure for breast cancer and, and all all cancer and so it's a little bit discouraging to hear you say something like that like there's more discouraging news out there well it's it's not so much discouraging as, as more of a fact and a trend. Breast cancer and death from breast cancer has been decreasing and improving. We have better diagnostic tools, better treatment tools. So actually that whole aspect is quite encouraging. Good. We're seeing better treatment out there, better survival, fewer side effects and fewer toxic side effects with the treatment. What's happening though is even though we are moving towards improved treatment, um, we're seeing more surgery. Mm. And we know that removing just the cancer with a lumpectomy and then giving radiation is as safe as removing the whole breast. Mm. So then why are women choosing to remove their whole breast? And not only that, removing both their breasts and doing double mastectomies for cancer in just one tiny part of their breast. That's the trend and that's the issue. Part of that is um, what we, we now believe is a prevention and fear of recurrence issue. Part of that is because we we can and we can do it well now. We actually have really excellent techniques in plastic surgery and reconstruction. So in part because we can reshape and reform the breast, women are saying, okay, well, I can still look as good as I did, sometimes even better. Um, Why not just remove all my risk or as much at risk as possible. So that's kind of what we're seeing. So in 2005, compared to 2013, mastectomy rates increased by 36%. Wow. Double mastectomy rates tripled. Wow. So that's the issue. What's going on? Why are women choosing to remove a totally natural, healthy part of their body? Um, and how can we help educate women some more? One um, big issue with the education issue is about 45% of women overestimate their risk, meaning, well, your risk of recurrence is, might only be 5%. Women might think it's 15% or higher even. Mm-hmm. So part of that is education. Part of that is fear. And then the rest of it is, is a bit of cosmetic um, improvements. 
So what would you want to tell these women? Because what if people, you know, I'm sure you've heard this talking to women. Well, I'd rather be safe than sorry. Um, how do you educate women and, and try to get them all the information before making a decision like that? Yeah, this is a very common conversation I have. Um, when I go through the cancer diagnosis with a patient and treatment options, I do talk about primarily how do we save healthy tissue mm -hmm. and keep you safe and alive. That's number one. Number two, what are your actual goals and what are your fears? So it does take a lot of individualized conversation with a woman, a lot more time educating them about why they would want to do that. Is it is it for a fear? Is it for an unjustified fear because they think their risk is actually three times as high as it, it what they think it is, but it's really much, much lower? Mm -hmm. um, so in general, education is the key, and I've always believed in that. So the actual true risk of, of a recurrence of breast cancer on average is about 0.2% a year. Mm -hmm. So in 10 years, a 2% risk of having that cancer come back on, in general. So I'm, I need to make sure I, I educate my patients individually and take that time to do it. Is is the risk completely gone if you get a double mastectomy? Good question. A lot of women think it's completely gone. It's certainly as low as it possibly could be, but not completely gone. For most women, we generally say even if you remove both your breast tissue, you have about a 1% to 2% lifetime risk of seeing another breast cancer in the breast. Okay. Obviously, if you have an invasive breast cancer, cancer can come back in the body elsewhere, not in the breast. Mm -hmm. um, that's the more important recurrence mm -hmm. when, it, when it spreads. So what would you like to see? What what would you like to 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 tell women out there who are who are you know might even be thinking about doing something like this? I know uh it was it made news when Angelina Jolie did it about a, maybe like 2 years ago mm -hmm. or something like That's that. That's right. She did. In 2013, she um, came up and announced that she was going to have a double mastectomy or had a double mastectomy due to carrying a mutation in a gene, the BRCA gene related to breast cancer. Now, that's a smart choice. If mm -hmm. you have a risk that leads to a breast cancer and future breast cancer of 60 to 80 percent, thinking about removing your breast tissue and preventing that risk makes a lot of sense. Mm. The majority of women, though, don't carry a gene mutation. And so when women are thinking about removing their risk, you have to look at your their actual risk. Mm -hmm. Do you carry a gene mutation? Do we even need to test you mm -hmm. for gene mutations and risk? There, um, she, Dr. Angelina Jolie, had a BRCA gene mutation. We know now there's at least a half a dozen genes related to breast cancer and breast cancer risk. Mm -hmm. So, screening and testing women makes a lot of sense. Um, but most women won't carry one of these mutations. Um, so, the the it's more important that we're educating women. So how can women get in contact with you um, or just go to any wrestling center and just get more information on what is the right choice for them when it comes to their bodies? Yeah, it's important that they have that conversation. Really, it, it involves um, a face-to-face -face interaction, going over your mom's side of the history, dad's side of the history, um, your own risk, your own breast density, um, and you're also actually your ethnicity make, makes a difference as well. Really? Yeah, so um, we, you know, all of the Breastlink centers are online, breastlink.com, and we, you can look us all up depending on what part of uh, California you're living in right now, and hopefully expanding out to uh, New York. Oh, wow, that would be incredible. So how many locations are there currently? Currently, there are four in Orange County and one in Encino. That is, especially because I live in the Valley, and I know how long it takes to get to Orange County, so I can't imagine what a difference that makes to just have one open in the Valley. Yeah, it's important. We're also uh, moving to open a cancer center by the end of the year. Mm. So the Integrated Cancer Institute should be opening by hopefully uh, November or December of this year. That is going to encompass all cancers in a similar type of model. So mm -hmm. multidisciplinary comprehensive care where you have the medical oncologist right there with the surgeon, with the radiation oncologist. So how what is uh, the website, phone number? Um, all the information maybe they can see, uh, be more educated also online before they even come. Yeah, in definitely. There's a lot of good resources. Our websites are up and running full of information on right. different breast symptoms, different problems you may have. So breastlink.com again. And then ICI.care is a, our website for our cancer center with all our oncologist information as well. Is there anything else you wanted to tell our listeners before you went today? Um, I think making sure that we get educated more about true risk rather than jumping to, I got to take both my breasts off. Um, there's still a role for that, removing both breasts. Um, and there's still some good indications for it, such as carrying a genetic mutation, having a strong family history. 
Um, there's nothing like a peace of mind, so I do understand that importance for women and, and, and one's peace of mind. Um, so that's about it. You know, making sure it's the right choice. We can always remove more tissue, but we can't give you it back. Mm. And so once you've gone through that, it's 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 really hard to reverse it. Whereas we can follow you, screen you carefully, and you know help you make that educated choice maybe later in the future if needed. He says breastlink.com. Correct. Awesome. Thank you so much. Thank you.